But Matthews was equally flustered last year when he asked the same question to the party's leading officer, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. What is the difference between a Democrat and a socialist? <laughs> I, I used to think there was a big difference. What do you think it is? The difference between... between a Democrat like Hillary Clinton the, the and a socialist like Bernie Sanders. What's the difference between a, being a Democrat and being a Republican? But what's the, bigger this, what's the big difference between a Democrat and a socialist? You're the chairman of the Democratic Party. Tell me the difference between you and a socialist. The, the relevant debate that we'll be having over the course of this, this campaign is what's the difference between a Democrat a and a Republican? I think it's so it's really difficult for them to explain the difference because there is no difference in the current contemporary Democratic Party. So since Bernie Sanders came on the scene introducing this term democratic socialism there into the mainstream, people are rightly confused. Here is the gist of it. This is socialism. So the three core demands of the National Day of Action are free public college, a cancellation of student debt, and a $15 an hour minimum wage um, for people who work on the campus. And how's that going to be paid? Um, great question. Uh, I mean, you know, so... Now, Margaret Thatcher famously said that the problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. Now, socialists, they say they're characterized by common ownership and democratic control of the means of production. And of course, this means there has to be a big state there to divvy up all of these goodies to everyone equally, making sure that the very basic needs of society are being taken care of. Now, the Democrats, they also agree, you know, they want equality for all, rule by the majority, and they pretend to believe that nobody should be too rich, right, unless you're Hillary Clinton or part of the ruling class. Um, and they also believe in a big, and I do mean a very big government, taking care of everyone. They want this huge welfare state and, of course, hoping that we're all going to need big government to take care of us. But presently, this ideology is being pushed through in a very totalitarian way via the Democratic Party. So it looks very much like the totalitarian socialist society of the Hunger Games. That movie does an excellent job kind of sh foreshadowing uh, what that society would look like. But let's take a look at the website of the Democratic Socialists of America. This is what they have to say about the Democratic Party versus socialists. So the question is, aren't you a party that's in competition with the Democratic Party for votes and support? No, we are not a separate party. Like our friends and allies in the feminist, labor, civil rights, religious and community organizing movements, many of us have been active in the Democratic Party. We work with those movements to strengthen the party's left wing. We hope that in some point in the future, in coalition with our allies, an alternative national party will be viable. For now, we'll continue to support progressives who have a real chance at winning elections, which usually means left-wing Democrats. I am a progressive Democrat. So what's the difference between a Democrat and a socialist? Well, the answer is there isn't a real difference anymore, but no one wants to admit it. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all in InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity, 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, InfoWars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll free 888 253 3139. Until we have a Congress that's in line with the majority of Americans, there are actions within my legal authority that we can take to help reduce gun violence and save more lives. Roughly one year from now, Obama's stranglehold over the executive office of the U.S. government will end. Impeaching Obama now seems to many to be futile. Is it not time for impeachment hearings against Obama? The, the best thing that we have going with Obama is he's got a year left, okay? Because, you know, by the time you do the hearings and everything, I, I don't... So don't you make know, him a martyr. In a way, you'll make him a martyr, but I, I don't even say that. But the problem with the Republicans is they'll try and fix it. They'll try, instead of... Get rid of it, and we can come up with a phenomenal plan. But wouldn't impeaching a president that has toyed with the Constitution with nothing to lose in the final days of his term, like a pyromaniac playing with gasoline and matches, send a stern message to future presidents? As a result of Watergate, the warning shot America fired after the comparatively minimal damage Richard Nixon did to the reputation of the White House seems to have been long forgotten similar to the way the American people have all but given up on the U.S. Congress. Now congressional Republicans are promising to repeal Obamacare and defund Planned Parenthood for the sake of the overwhelming demands of their constituents. Of course, the bill will be sent to Obama's desk where it will be vetoed, but the bill can't be amended by Democrats due to special rules attached to it by the Senate. And if there is any sanity left in American politics, a vote for veto override will be set for January 22nd. Led by Obama's new lapdog, Paul Ryan, it appears to be just another elaborate stunt to rejuvenate public support for a Congress that has earned itself an 82% disapproval rating, according to Gallup polls. While 318 million plus Americans sit and wait for Congress to get their snouts out of the corporate trough, wouldn't impeaching Obama send a clear message to the sycophantic takeover of Congress that we are coming for you next? 
Obama's staged gun grabbing is finally fueling long overdue impeachment talks. Now the Republican National Committee is to consider a resolution drafted for the impeachment of President Barack Obama. The resolution, which seems to have been drafted by the North American Law Center, is to be weighed up at a January 13th meeting of the RNC, reports Brandon Hall of West Michigan Politics Blog. The document is titled Articles of Impeachment of Barack Hussein Obama. Article 2 of the resolution lists 19 examples of Obama's malfeasance, misconduct, and abuse of the Oval Office, including the IRS targeting of conservative organizations and bypassing Congress with the use of executive action on key issues. Article 3 of the resolution states that Obama has been aiding and abetting known enemies of the United States, citing the Muslim Brotherhood, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Hamas, and the Taliban, among others. RNC committee man Dave Ajma told the Daily Wire in an interview that he will introduce the resolution, which consists of 48 criminal charges in total. Ajma said, The way it works is one House of Representatives member puts in impeachment articles for the House and it starts the process. Recently, we didn't own the House and the Senate, but Republicans do now. And the purpose of it really is we're a nation of laws and a separation of powers. The fact that we have to be reminded of that signals just how far gone the republic truly is. And if impeachment rumblings barely put a bump in Obama's totalitarian path, legally all we have left is to send in the sergeant at arms in the Senate to slap the handcuffs onto President Obama. It's interesting how the Senate has now made that information unavailable to the general populace. John Bound for Infowars.com. Ridiculous, isn't it? A guy in a gorilla suit telling you to turn your guns in. Well, it's just as stupid for the UN at last month's climate conference in Paris to claim that Coco, the great gorilla, had come out in sign language calling for action on climate change. They taught the gorilla what sign language to show to then claim that it was geopolitically aware of what was going on in the world. A total fraud on the people. And you got to ask yourself, how would they have the nerve to sell it on TV and radio and print all over the world that gorilla wants action? You could claim a gorilla said, go eat at McDonald's or uh, wear green shirts on Tuesday. I, I, I mean, obviously, most of us know this, but what does it say about our fellow humans that they've dumbed us down to this point? But why not? They tell us that polar bears are all dying. You can't swim because the ice caps melted. The ice caps are the biggest they've ever been recorded. Polar bear numbers are up five full, but they were in the 50s. They tell us penguins can't swim too. They're all dying. None of it's true. They go, look at icebergs. They're melting. The glaciers always melt. That, that happens every spring. So that's why we illustrated this with Coco. And it just shows how crazy things have gotten and how stupid they think we are. <laughs> you
You know, Australia is a good example. Canada is a good example. The UK is a good example. Why? Because each of them had mass killings. Somebody somewhere will comment and say, Obama politicized this issue. Well, this is something we should politicize. I'm not going to carry a gun. I don't want to be involved in a gunfight. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States,